I think if I had a job that only simulated my brain, I wouldn't feel simulated enough. Like I need both. While you're climbing a tree, you become, you feel like you're becoming one with the tree. It can be almost like a mystical feeling. It's never a dull moment when someone at a party asks me, what do you do for a living? And I say, I'm an arborist. I climb trees for a living. And their eyes like totally light up. You're not gonna get filthy rich doing this. You're just gonna get filthy. Every day I come home, I'm dirty, tired, but I can't imagine doing anything else with my life. Nothing stokes my fire the same way that interacting with trees does. I do think there's that stereotype that to do this job, you need to be a tomboy or you need to act like the men, talk like the men to be accepted. But from my personal experience, that's not true. You can still be a girly girl and get your nails done and embrace your feminine side if you want to and still do this job well, regardless of what you look like or what you wear. I started tree work in 2015. My dad owns a tree company, and we were at lunch one day, jokingly talking about how my brother was bad at it. And my dad was like, you could do better um, as a joke. Um, and I guess I took him seriously. Quit my serving job the next day and started doing tree work, and then fell in love with it. Haven't stopped since. The great thing about our industry is that everybody starts the same way. We all have no experience, and all you're trying to do is earn your spot to get off the ground that day. Through that, there's a level of kind of proving yourself, improving your work ethic, and kind of dedication to the craft. I went to Virginia Tech to study natural resources conservation and minored in forestry. My last year in school, I took an urban forestry course where we learned all about climbing trees in the winter of 2011. Landed a job climbing trees and haven't looked back ever since. It's, or down. Or down. Well, no, I look down pretty often <laughs> because it's, it's an awesome view. It's a full 3D immersion into a completely different world that very few actually get to experience. It's intoxicating. <laughs> From the outsider looking in, it looks to be relatively simple. You're on a rope and you're moving around, granted with something sharp, whether it be a chainsaw or a handsaw, and you're just cutting limbs. In reality, we are looking for specific places in the tree to make cuts because we need it to move in a certain way or drop through a specific hole, or we are removing one limb to leave another one to actually steer the direction of growth. Within tree climbing, we use a different tool for different situations to do like a cut or do some work on a branch. We're really technicians. In order to do this work safely and at a high level, it requires a lot of education. It's years of training especially considering every day is different. You can't repeat the job over and over again and just get good at it. You have to learn how to manipulate your skill set every day to work with what challenge has been given to you. A lot of people don't realize that there is schooling, there's training, there's certifications, there's all kinds of things to help develop who you are and how you work. I'm Krista Stratting, I'm from Ontario, Canada. I have been doing this for roughly 16 years as a certified arborist and tree worker. There is something about our industry that is very inclusive 
and inviting and, and the best example of it is at a competition. Here everyone's so supportive and cheering because when we do our best here, it creates innovation and different styles and, and ways of doing things that we can take back to our job. The people in the tree community are just the nicest people ever. Very supportive, very welcoming, regardless yeah. of your experience. And they want to share that passion with everyone and they want people to come in and be included. And the people that I meet at these competitions, every single person is like high energy, vibrant, and they're, they're just happy to be able to do the job. That's inspirational for me. My name is Luke Blinds. I'm 54 years old and I've been doing arboriculture for about 25 years now. When I initially started uh, and went to some of these competitions to watch as a spectator just to see what it was about, there were some people who had been doing it that uh, were telling me I was too old to be getting started climbing trees. Now at my age, it's fun to kind of be an inspiration to some of the younger guys. Most of us have had situations where we've been injured or close to being injured in, in really bad ways. Even though things can go bad, we still enjoy the process of doing what we do. We're put in situations a lot of times where you are scared and you are thinking of like the worst possible thing that can happen, but you overcome it because you know how to do this job safely. I think it makes us feel more aware of the fragility of life. Most of us live our lives with that uncertainty and I think arborists acknowledge it every day when they go to work. You know, we climb to make them healthier. It's important for more people to know about it so we can employ more people and, you know, put more people out there to care for the trees that we do have. There is a lot more that goes on up in that tree. <laughs> we didn't know that the trees were so high here in the middle of Copenhagen. We know nothing about it. I read a little bit in, uh, at the internet about it. The techniques or what's difficult and what's dangerous, yeah, it's pretty rad. Arborists love what they do. Most of us aren't in it just to try to make the money. Being an arborist to me means I'm a professional. I am skilled at a craft that most people don't know anything about. The gratitude that we get from clients and customers that had no idea that we even existed, but then when they needed us, it's just like worth more than my paycheck, you know? Deep-rooted passion for what we do. Like taking so much pride in the specifics of everything, you know, to the trees themselves and how much we know about the trees, all the way down to specifically where things lie on our harness. And that level of detail, at least to me, indicates a level of passion that I haven't seen in a whole lot of places. One of the main things as a tree climber is you want to make sure that you're anchored into something strong. When I'm thinking about life, I feel like that idea applies to so many things. Are you anchored to something strong? Is it reliable? Is it trustworthy? Once your anchor's good, the rest of your climb is just smooth.